Protein Synthesis Protein is produced at the ribosome in the cytoplasm. DNA, which codes for protein production, is in the nucleus. The task of messenger RNA is to get the code information in the nucleus to the production site in the cytoplasm. This is achieved through transcription. The messenger RNA then moves to the cytoplasm where ribosomes read the code and assemble the protein that is coded for by the mRNA in a process called translation. If you recall from our cookie factory analogy, DNA is like a recipe book of all the proteins that we'll ever need to have constructed in our bodies. And one individual recipe is actually the code for one protein. During transcription, mRNA is copied from a segment of DNA to produce that recipe for one protein. It is then transported out of the nucleus and to the ribosome. In our cookie factory analogy, the chef was the ribosome and it was his job to assemble all the ingredients and make it into the final product. And the final product of a cell is always a type of protein, but in our cookie factory analogy, it was cookies. The process by which the ribosome assembles the amino acids to make the final product, the protein, is translation. So keeping this framework in mind, let's take a look at what actually happens in protein synthesis. As we know, protein is produced at the ribosomes of the cytoplasm. DNA, which codes for the pro protein production, is in the nucleus. The task of messenger RNA is to get the code information in the nucleus to the production site in the cytoplasm. This is achieved through transcription. So here we see a segment of DNA and we can see that only one part of it is unraveling and opening up. And what's being produced here is a complementary copy of messenger RNA and that messenger RNA will be processed and then move out of the nucleus through a nuclear pore to a ribosome. Once at the ribosome, the code will be read and tRNA will bring various amino acids in the correct order and a polypeptide chain or a chain of amino acids will be built and later on that will also be processed to become a functional protein. Let's take a closer look at what happens during transcription in the nucleus. During transcription, the segment of DNA that codes for the desired protein unravels through the action of helicase. The enzyme RNA polymerase then reads the code on the template strand of the DNA and transcribes it into complementary mRNA nucleotides in the form of triplet codons. These are the RNA equivalent of the coding or sent strand of the DNA. This results in a complementary strand of mRNA that codes for a single protein. So we could take a look at this mRNA strand a little bit more closely. We would see that it's made up of these triplet codons. It's this series of codons that will be translated into the correct series of amino acids to form the protein that's required at the time by the cell. Each triplet codon on the resulting mRNA codes for a specific amino acid. And here we have another view of transcription. And you can see that the RNA transcript that's being formed is a perfect complement to the template strand or the antisense strand of the DNA. Now we'll take a look at what happens during translation at the ribosome. The triplet code is transcribed into mRNA. Each three base unit of mRNA is called a codon and each codon corresponds to an amino acid or the start or stop synthesis signal. Here we see the table of mRNA codons and you can see that each triplet codon on the mRNA corresponds to an amino acid. This is also in your textbook. Have a look. Let's take a look at translation in action. Each tRNA is responsible for delivering a specific amino acid. For example, the tRNA AAG always delivers phenylalanine. AAG will bind with its complement on the mRNA, which is the codon UUC. If you look at the table of mRNA codons, you'll see that the codon UUC calls for phenylalanine. 
We're looking at a snapshot of the process of translation in action. The ribosome is moving down a strand of mRNA in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Several amino acids have already been added to the growing polypeptide chain. The most recently added amino acid is asparagine. At the P and A sites, two more amino acids are currently being added, lysine and asparagine. Their tRNA anticodons are currently docked at the ribosome's P and A sites. The tRNA with the anticodon AAC has already been released from the P site. It can bond with another free tryptophan molecule. A peptide bond has formed between tryptophan and lysine, and another is forming between lysine and asparagine. What will happen next? As the ribosome moves over by one triplet codon, the tRNA UUU will be released from the P site and CUA will take its place in the P site. At the A site, AAG will bond and deliver its amino acid phenylalanine. What would be the next amino acid added if the next mRNA codon was GGC? Check the mRNA codon table to find out. GGC corresponds to glycine, so the next amino acid added would be glycine. This process will continue until the stop codon, UGA, is reached. At this point, no amino acid is delivered and the complete polypeptide chain is released from the ribosome. It is important to note that the ribosome always begins reading the mRNA at the start codon, AUG, and finishes with the stop codon. Many ribosomes transcribe the mRNA simultaneously. This allows many copies of the same protein to be made quickly and is called a polysome. Check out these animations and videos to help you get a better idea of what's going on with protein synthesis.